1936 Rolls-Royce, the index number is CYB300, chassis type number is GTL-1, engine L25Q. The body number, it's a Hooper coach, 8605. The body number, as I was saying, is 8605, and the design number is 6310. I understand there was three made in 1936. This particular model was delivered in April of 1936. I have the registration back to 1950, and with, with um, my own involvement with the car began in 1970. I purchased the car in 1970. It was brought over from England to Canada, which time Shortly thereafter, I bought the car. It's in original condition, as you can see. It requires a paint job. It's got the aluminum body, it has jump seats. We'll take a look at the interior right away. The car requires a muffler. It is in running condition right now. Mileage in the car is 85,300. The odometer does not work anymore, so I, I believe there's been quite a few miles put on since it's broken down. It's a Hooper coach. The interior has a couch in the back with the jump seats. It's a six light limousine, three per side, as you can see. It's got the glass divider window for the front compartment to the back compartment.
going for a quick drive. Just go for a quick tour and we'll be right back. a great volcanic cataclysm 500 BC. There's only one way to find out if they're right or all wet, and the dynamic pair doesn't hesitate to make the leap. But initial optimism is dampened as three weeks of fruitless diving frustrates the watery duo. The unasked question, could the experts have been right? Then, in a scenario that can only be called most unlikely, an incredible turn of events. Early one morning, and for no apparent reason, Jack and Natasha are led directly to the ruins by friendly dolphins. They are instantly awestruck by the amazing blue hues executed on the elegant structures. One look at the fabulous blues of Maru and the hardships of the past weeks are forgotten. Once again, the skill and bravery of our adventurers had paid off as it was obvious that these colors would make another handsome addition to the Wilson Art Design Group 1 line for 1992. And so, Jack and Natasha moved to the interior of these amazing structures of yore, wondering what further revelations await them inside. Entering an interior chamber, they can almost feel the presence of its original toga-clad inhabitants, even though the ancient building is now over 15,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Anxiously, they search for the secret vault in which the colors are hidden. Suddenly, Natasha spots a strange handle built into the floor mosaic. After a little effort, the hidden door comes loose, revealing a murky vault below. Within is a virtual spectrum of resplendent blue shades. Bringing their treasures up from the depths where they had slumbered for so long, Jack and Natasha resolve to waste no time in bringing these fabulous blues to the designers of America. Although leg two of their grueling expedition has turned out to be an unqualified success, our intrepid duo knows that further adventures await. After their breathtaking discovery of the fabulous blues of Maru, our adventurers could well have been excused if they had allowed themselves a brief respite, perhaps lolling on the beaches of nearby Bermuda. But no, predictably enough, our inexhaustible explorers are ready to move on the very next day to the third and final destination of their dramatic sojourn. Rumors persist of an isolated sub-tribe which left South America around 1500 AD, settled on a remote Pacific island and developed a strange hybrid culture which was half Mayan, half Polynesian. Their lives revolved around a celebration of the lush green colors which blanketed their rainforest home. And after extensive research, Jack is convinced that home was the tiny unexplored island of Rangaroa. Preparations complete, our daring team is all confidence. And so it's off to the South Pacific in search of the temple of the Emerald Forest and the lush green shades preserved therein. It's an epic journey over the breadth of North America and the world's greatest ocean in just a few short days. Then, after a dicey landing on the beach, Jack and Natasha are ready to begin their trek, a daunting trek into the wild, uncharted interior of Rangaroa.
For days and at a veritable snail's pace, they work their way inland, fighting the brutal heat, maddening tropical insects, and bush so dense they literally wear out several machetes each day. Penetrating ever further into the bush, they encounter a group of natives who discourage them from continuing. They insist they've never seen any temple ruins, and they warn that the central portion of the island is inhabited only by wild beasts of every description. Regardless, our dauntless adventurers press on. And indeed, as our stalwart travelers continue, hair-raising encounters with the local wildlife become increasingly common. But at last, a sight for sore eyes. For through the thick, choking vines, they catch a dim glimpse of an archaic, crumbling monument. Rushing forward, they pull the vines away and reveal the long-forgotten temple of the Emerald Forest. Jack and Natasha are immediately stunned by the lush, verdant shades of green which adorn the temple. With a new energy born of their great discovery, our audacious twosome moves into the temple's central compound, where they believe samples of the incredible greens were stashed by the original inhabitants. In this area, bizarre mystic ceremonies were conducted, including grisly sacrifices of hapless tribesmen to the bloodthirsty gods of a forgotten race. Natasha locates a hidden lever and without hesitation pulls it with no idea what will result. As our fearless twosome stands back in awe, an ancient altar rises from the floor with a horrible creaking sound. Approaching the smoldering relic, they discover the final object of their quest, the rich greens that have lain undiscovered for centuries. Once again, the diligence and unswerving persistence of our adventurers had paid off. And so, their plane laden with the most fantastic new laminate colors and patterns ever discovered, Jack and Natasha speed back to America to share their finds with designers, architects, and fabricators everywhere. Thanks to them and their unconquerable spirit of adventure, it's obvious that Design Group 1 for 1992 will be more exciting than ever before. Thanks, Louis. That'll be it for tonight. So, gang, what do you think? I think it captures perfectly the malaise of our culture, the seemingly contradictory yearning for a simpler past and an exciting future that will shake off the ennui of contemporary urban existence. Yeah, but does it hype the new colors and patterns like we want it to? It encases them in a slyly promotional veil of romance and nostalgia. Uh, spirit of adventure that imbues them with intangible value, much like the work of Werner Herzog, but with a Fellini-esque sense of alienation and just a slight Babinko-like tinge of the exotic. I don't know. I keep thinking we should have played up the romantic angle more. But by having Jack and Natasha consummate the relationship, we would have lost the tension that develops a momentum of its own, a certain bogart, happen African queen interplay. This way, synergistically speaking, it becomes really a puckish satire of contemporary social mores. Exactly. Reminiscent of the early Kurosawa, but with a distinctly American sense of action and discovery. Hey, gang. My sponsors have coerced me to remind you. Don't forget to fill out and send in your official entry form for the Spirit of Adventure sweepstakes. You could walk away with a truly gaudy display of crass materialism. The grand prize, for instance, this brand new Ford Explorer, is the top of the line Eddie Bauer model with a plethora of special options, like a really serious audio system. Slip in one of your favorite Kraftwerk CDs and it will blow you out of your seat, believe me. Second prize is this magnificent 1.18 carat emerald mined in Brazil. Third prize is this stunning 1.61 carat blue sapphire, truly decadent. And fourth prize is this lovely 2.03 carat amethyst. This gem was cut in Ida Oberstein, Germany, which of course is renowned for his skilled artisans. The entry form also includes the official sweepstakes rules. If you haven't already received yours, it's available from your area Wilson art representative. I refuse to say more because your unbridled enthusiasm grows tiresome. Goodbye, good luck, fade to black, please.